Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for always supporting us and, and taking a look at us. Yeah, happy Friday, guys. That's what you wanted to interrupt me for to say that? No, I didn't. I thought you were done talking. <laughs> Well, before we begin, as always, please remember to, um, if you're watching us on YouTube, like this video. If you're listening to us on any streaming platform, please like, subscribe, follow, do whatever you can. If you can relate to the video, uh, please comment down below. Share with whoever you know who maybe they could if you can't relate. Um, also on social media, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Most important thing for us is you engaging with us. It creates the conversation and it creates, you know, everybody understanding what's going on, the yeah. different opinions that everyone can relate to. So... Um, yeah, like this video, comment, share everything you can, much supported. Yep, let us know what you what do you guys think. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we have a very special, special today's a special day. It's a very special day. It's not like any other day. Nope. So for the f- very first time we have a guest on the show. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know him, I mean I know him by Richie Garcia. Uh he is at the underscore real dick on Instagram. Correct. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna call him Ricardo today because he's he's in a relationship, so you know things are a little bit different. We gotta little respect him <laughs> a little more. Respect mature. him. Yeah, he's yeah. more mature. I'm surprised you're here by yourself. Thank you. Yes, I didn't thank know the, the leash was that long. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> we're starting. Early we had then. to start off. We're start with I told you. That's a good start. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So first things first. So obviously, you know, us as a dating and relationship podcast, we want to talk about all different kinds of people. You know that wherever they come from. So in this case, you're obviously you're in a, you're a promoter now. Yeah. All right. So Marvin, I know you have a list of questions. So you know, before we do that, you know what? Tell us a little bit about yourself. First of all, I want to thank you guys for bringing me on board. Thank you very much. First guest, uh, it's an honor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am missing uh, my coffee. I was hoping you'd have some coffee I mean, for me, but we don't, we don't <laughs> record on the morning. So if I give you coffee now, you'll never go to sleep. Uh, I drink coffee at two in the morning. Don't oh, worry about that. Dance. But yeah, um, most of you guys uh, know me. Obviously, I've known you guys. I'm 25 years old, Miami, born in Miami, raised. Uh, I'm a promoter, and I mean, I would say a natural-born hustler. <laughs> you that know me. I like uh, that. I like that. We try to make money however we can, you know. We do everything. Um, yeah, so Richie's a, a serial entrepreneur, I would say. Um, very, very small, but with big goals, and he's going to be growing. I mean, from what I know about Richie, he has the Raymond G, Thai, Pocket Square, and Cufflink line, pretty mm-hmm. much men's accessories. He also sells socks. We're actually going on a joint venture with uh, another product, which should we'll, we'll discuss in a later date. Um, so and he has his own promoting company. I know from when I met you, you were doing promoting for small places, and now pretty much your company does wherever. Yeah, we, we've come a long way. We started with one venue, and we got to the point where we were doing seven parties a week. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> That's it. We started doing seven parties a week, and... I mean, we'll get into that as well, but that, that's exhausting. <laughs> just yeah, It's fun and, and, and the money's great, but it, it gets tiring. Yeah, I can imagine. So we, we, we look into other, like what you just said, our joint venture. We got to find other ways to make money as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like, you know, in this age where we, we're, we're, we're hustlers, Marvin. Yeah. You're a writer, you know? I, I feel like we live in a world where just having one stre- stream of income or that, that, that's yeah, not that, enough. Yeah. That's not enough with that narrative. It's like, you know, nine to five or that you go to school, you know, get a job work 50 weeks a year two weeks off that kind of you know narrative is kind of it's not what the world we live in today and exactly. so i think when i look at you and not everything that you're doing uh you definitely defy that statement you defy, you defy that uh way of life yeah. so obviously i met you in college a little late. i think rich uh chris obviously knew you before then um i was what i don't know 22 years old or something like that and I met you in college, and you were always, back then you didn't do promoting, but you were always kind of the life of the party, you were uh, outspoken, outgoing, and so I feel like, like at that time, did you know that you were going to be a promoter, or is this something that you kind of felt was the way to go for you? I mean, I, I had been promoting from before that. I oh, had you did? Just, I had just taken a break okay. um, due to a relationship that I was in. I stopped promoting for about two years, which was the two years that I was in college. Okay. But wow, I started okay. promoting when I was 15 years old. Wow. Okay. I started promoting the all-age parties. Uh, we would do uh, Saturday nights at Cafe Cristal and Taboo. It <laughs> it's on it's on Sunset and I thought, 107. I don't, I don't want to know where it is. Yeah. It's in the if middle you, of a little shopping center. You, we used to throw all-age parties there. Yeah, if you promoted there, I probably don't want to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine, I'm 15, and I would tell my mom, hey, I need you to drop me off at, at this little nightclub here because yeah. I'm making some money. And she, she wouldn't even believe it at first. She'd be like, oh, you're just going to go party. And I'll get back in the car. She would wait for me to for the party to end. She would no just way. chill there. She would go hours eat, come back, and then she'd be like, "Oh, so you got paid?" I'd be like, 
So how'd you how'd you how'd you yeah. first start? Like what was the how'd you get on that? I would go to like all these all age house parties and like from there uh someone you meet people. Someone. So back then the first person that I promoted with was Danny, uh pretty boy. He, uh I don't know if you guys know him. He does MMA now as well. Oh, so, oh I think I have heard of him. Yeah, so he had a company called uh AIA, Above It All Entertainment, and I started promoting with him. And then from there, we started doing events at Nocturnal, Mecca, oh, and all yeah, that. Yeah, and then that's when I met Troy. Okay. Mm. Which, I mean, from there to unknown, it's hilarious because, like, we didn't work. Me and Troy and Pooh, we never worked together throughout those years. So Troy and Pooh would actually go against each other in parties. Mm. Until oh, they got like, a, like Yeah, they would compete against each other. Same party, same day, different venue. And then from there, eventually, they started working together. And then I came in as a third string as a to, to join unknown. Okay. That's but like, awesome. Like why did you why did you want why was promoting the thing that kind of I liked partying. Oh, you liked partying. It was fun. Yeah, my my mom was always the type of person to take me, my sister, and all of our friends out. Mm -hmm. I tell my mom to this day that she should have created Uber, because she would literally pick she us up, take us to the party, wait for us, yeah. pick us up, and then take us wherever we wanted. Yeah. Like if I was a little smarter back then, I would have created Uber myself. <laughs> That's a great mother. And I I really liked it. I was outgoing, like you said. Mm -hmm. I, I get along with people, you know. Like yes. I'm easy to talk to. So, like, I felt like that was something that I was good at, and I could bring people to come to the party and just make some easy money and have fun while I was doing it. Okay. And then when you were in school, like, what, what was your degree? What, what did you go to school hey, for? I studied business. Okay. And did you, is it, is it correct that you dropped out? Yeah, I dropped okay. out. Do you ever regret, like, do you regret Not it? at all. I, yeah, yeah. Before you continue, so for those of you who don't know, these, Richie and I, we have a very special relationship. You know, he's one of my closest friends, actually. Um, when I was in Sigma Phi Epsilon, I was in a fraternity in FIU. That's where I met Richie. So I rushed. I became a brother. Following semester, he rushed, and then he picked me as his big brother. So I was pretty much the guidance counselor for him, and he, we've been close ever since. And I was the vice president of communication. Eventually, he became the vice president of communication, and his role for, for that for the fraternity was pretty much communication within the fraternity, sororities, the school, outside school, you know, publicity, everything. He was also the vice president of programming, yeah. which that role is to do what? Throw parties. Throw parties. <laughs> program all the parties. So it was almost like in his blood that no matter where he was yeah. going to go, he was going to do, do something with partying. You can put me in an elderly home and I'll fucking throw bingo parties if you want. I like <laughs> right, that. Well, we'll jot like that down. We'll, we'll, we'll find our connections. <laughs> I like that. Um, when, so you obviously didn't finish college, but is there anything that you can, a memory or experiences that you can, you know, think back where that, that has taught you something, what, what you do today? Honestly. Despite not graduating. Honestly. I was actually talking to my girl about this literally two days ago. Okay. And I was telling her, I was like, oh, no, like, you don't got to go to school okay. to get a degree unless you want to do something that's like, let's say you want to be a doctor. Lawyer, you want to be a like lawyer. Something. Like, you want to do that. But, yeah. like, I feel that, like, like what you were saying earlier, like, mm -hmm. in America, like, if you're working nine to five mm -hmm. and, and you're literally working for somebody else, you're just slaving for them. Absolutely. Sure. And in America, you got to hustle and you got to do your own thing. So I'd rather have two, three, four, five small businesses and learn mm -hmm. as I'm going, then work for somebody else and never achieve anything that I want of my own. Yeah, mo most Love entrepreneurs, that. that's yeah. how they learn business. They don't. Yeah. It's not that they go to business school, they just drop out. And you, they, you remember when I started Raymond G? I dropped out of business school, and I think I took, what, intro to business, and that's it? Yeah, Because yeah, I cheated yeah, yeah. my whole way through? I remember, I remember. <laughs> I got and it. I learned as I went on. Like, every day it was, I learned this, I failed at this, and then do it again, and keep on, and keep on, and keep on, and that's how you learn. I that's like that. So so what was, it, what was that turning point where you were like, okay, I'm done with school, I'm going to drop out? Can so, like, back the, to that the real reason why I dropped out of school at first was because I was working at Rusty Pelican. Okay. I remember. And I was making, oh, like... I remember uh, you were making money. I was making, like, $6,000 a month, chilling, like, literally just serving tables. Yeah, yeah. But it was kind of like a slave job as well. I was working 70-hour weeks mm -hmm. from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. It was crazy hours, but, like, the money was good, so I didn't care. And I was taking, I think it was what? It was summer... And I took three summer classes or four summer classes and I failed three of them. Okay. And I was like, all right, so they're going to cut out my financial aid. I'm going to have to pay back money now. I was like, forget it. I'm just going to drop out and that's just, it. and that's, that's at the same time where I was trying to start Raymond G. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to just die by this. So, so I have to either make it here or I'm going to be it. a bum. Yeah. And why, why did you pick Raymond G? Like as that, that's like, <laughs> like, I know the yeah. name. Yeah. You walked outside, you saw the Raymond James building. Yeah. And that's what you thought. Man, that's <laughs> you didn't know. No, yeah. I used to work at a, at a restaurant, Coral Gables Swine. Okay. And we would walk out the back and right at the back, the Raymond James building is there. And I was like, that has a really nice ring to it. And my middle name is actually Raymond. Oh, R-A-Y-M-O-N. Wow. I love that. And my last name is Garcia. So I put Raymond G. 
So then that's but, how I came up so, with but, it. And then, so why ties? Like, why was that the first venture? Uh, so the person that was like leading me and helping me to like do this, he told me, he's like, find something you like and run with it. And like, at first I thought of so many things. Like at first, my first things were just sports, like thinking of sports, but I was like, what can I sell? that's going to make money for sports. And then I went to the next thing. I always liked dressing up nice, mm -hmm. you know, and I never did before that unless it was a formal event, but I loved it. I loved the look. I liked the ties and all that. And then I just started doing some research and I found like that I could get it for a really good price. Like and I liked sale. the little set and I was like, this is it. And I just started with that and I ran with it. Right. I remember I bought some from you. They yeah. Actually, they were nice. That was, that was a good purchase. I got 51 sets coming. Give me you a month that? and a half. You 51 new sets coming. So that's, what's, what's the Instagram <laughs> for that? What's the, well, hey. we'll, we'll, we'll tag them for you. So. Raymond.g.apparel. Awesome. And we'll awesome. put it in the description for, yeah. for everybody to check I'm it out. I'm trying to follow the, distri the distribution route, though. Like, I'm not going to have an online store. If okay. you want to buy, just hit me, shoot me a DM, and I'll give you guys a good price. But right. I'm trying to get straight distribution now and just get into many stores. Yeah, right so now, just, just for for example, this is actually a tie from actually Raymond G. So it's actually one of my favorite ties. So, I mean, hit it up. And, and, and this isn't the, the, the tie clip, unfortunately. <laughs> but the tie is. And, 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 yeah. and they're actually very, very nice. And they're super high quality. So I love wearing them. Uh, he doesn't wear suits as often. <laughs> he did buy as well. So, I mean, but if you do need it, you know, they're at a great price. And it comes with a full set. You literally can't mess up. Um, so unknown is is so what it's a group you guys host parties plan parties uh, or plan events right yeah so unknown we started we were called a different thing before we were called vert life group okay and we did that while we were running uh, the parties at SQL okay. but then those parties felt like it was a young crowd and we needed to rebrand the company to change the name so people wouldn't associate us with like underage parties mm -hmm. yeah so we changed it we rebranded and. It's funny because, like, we threw out, like, 150 different names before we came up with Unknown. We were sitting at Hooters, and Troy and Pooh and me, we were just shooting out names, and Troy was like, I want something ironic. And I was like, Unknown. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, we're three of the most known promoters in Miami. Like, Unknown yeah. would be great. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. how we came up with the name Unknown. Nice. And so you've been in business for with Unknown for how many years? A year and a half yeah. now, going on two in August, I think. Okay. Has the pandemic kind of, like... Oh yeah, Screwed this shit sucks. Bit. Yeah, it's been rough for you guys. This right? shit's been rough. Yeah, we haven't worked since March. Well, so what? What are the the locations that you were working before the pandemic? So right now we have country night Wednesdays. Yeah, we got a little country <laughs> night. Like, oh, where else that. you got country in Miami? Well, where's that? Yeah, that's the point. Nobody online. Oh, there, you there's know, Roman. Roman has the 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 country crowd. You yeah. remember that? Yeah. It, it, doesn't he have a girlfriend too? It doesn't matter. He got the people. <laughs> All I need is him to show up. We right. got Wednesday at Copper Blues. We do country night. Thursdays That's at Copper, at Copper, Copper, Blues. At Copper Blues. Yeah. Okay. Then Thursdays we got Brick House. Um, Fridays right now we're off. Okay. And then I don't even know where I'm at Saturdays. Where am I Saturdays? Well, I mean you're you're off every day, right? I now. think I'm off Saturday. Well, Saturdays I was doing Vandalo, but I don't. I think we're in the works of picking up a Saturday now. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday we got brunch at Copper Blues, and then the after party at Ragged. And okay. you guys are working now, the, like now at this point in time, or no, not yet. No, not yet. We're waiting, but brunch should be back by the last Sunday of this month. I, 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 yeah, go go. Yeah, I thought I saw you brunch. Was that? Yeah, we oh. we were doing an interview. Okay, but, but I wasn't, wasn't official. Yeah, it wasn't capacity. official. Yet. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I was just posting it. You know, we gotta build the hype. Okay. I, I remember that that a while back you were looking for actually a venue to launch your own place. Yeah. Yes, is that still? So it's still in the process, but like it's on we, put on hold. Yeah, so like we we had to sit down like during this pandemic, it really like hit us. Yeah, and we thought to ourselves, we're like, if we're not working, like if the clubs were to shut down or the pandemic were to extend, then we have nothing to do. We got to figure out other ways to make money so we're not just sitting on our ass. Sure. Okay. So we've expanded like, and we've thought of other ideas that we want to do as a team cool. before we open up a bar or a club or something like that. So that way we have a second source of income to protect us in case this whole thing happens again with the clubs. That's a big risk. Yeah. Yeah. So with unknown, for some people who might not know, so the club, the, the, the venue pays you guys a set fee and you guys are bringing in the people? Or how Correct. Does that work for maybe so it depends know. on certain venues. Okay. So like... A venue could just pay you a flat fee. Okay. So, like, they could be like, all right, we're going to pay you X and Y and Z dollars for you to come and bring this amount of people. Then you have clubs where, like, like clubs that don't have too much going on and aren't making as much, they might even offer you a full percentage of the bar. Like, let's say they'll give you a 20% of the bar. Like the, like the profits? Or yes. Like, oh, wow. No, 20% of sales. The sales. Of net sales. Okay. So, let's say this club isn't doing good and they hire us and they'll say, okay, we'll give you full door and 20% of the bar. Whatever we make at the door, 
is ours, mm-hmm. and then twenty percent at the bar. So if the bar does ten thousand dollars that day, mm-hmm. we make two grand off the bar. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how like that's a lot of a, a lot of people like doing it like that because you get sh- you put more work in and you get more people in. Okay. But like for us, that we have a big team. We get our flat fee, us three, and then we make sure our guys eat. So, like, sure. if we get a percentage, we get from there to give them. Like, we focus more on being a family instead of just, like, an employee. Sure. Because if not, then people... Well, are those are your boys. Around. Even yeah. outside of work, I always see you with them. Yeah, anyways. most of them are always at our house. But when we all lived in, in the row together, they were all always over. Yeah. Everybody would sleep on my couch. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, obviously, with that lifestyle, obviously, long nights and partying mm-hmm. and drinking, got a lot of girls. How does, you know... Relationship, relationship in fit into in fit fit into that for you and for yeah. maybe your partners as well. Anybody in the nightlife industry? Yeah. So I mean, Veer has known me since I got back into the promotion game. So he's seen me go go up from like from being single to then having a girlfriend, stop promoting, and then breaking up, getting back into the promotion world, then having another girlfriend that was cool with it, then breaking up with her. Like he's seen everything, so, and it's just like I think it's more of like you, the trust. Because my first girlfriend, when I started promoting, she didn't like it. So I quit promoting for two for years. Her, for her. Yeah. Do you regret that decision? 100%. Yeah. 100%. I was like, after that, I realized, I was like, this is my income. Like, this is how I make my money. And like, if you're not comfortable with it, then like, we got to reevaluate this. Okay. Yeah, relationship Richie, from what I know, sucked. Like he was the worst, and I don't. I would. I would probably text him every week just to tell him. That. I think I still have and, those messages. And saved. go along my day just to let him know how much he sucked. Yeah. Because um, he's the kind of person, which, you know, I respect him for because he really did put his relationship first. And I know a lot of women would like that. But I think, you know, moving forward now as we mature, we understand that we both need to be happy with ourselves to grow together yep. happily in a relationship. So back then, I you know, I feel like, you know, maybe that meant it made sense to do that at the time. And I'm sure you look back at it and you're like, crap, that was a yeah. should have never done it. Should have never. But yeah, he sucked. He was the worst person. But you learn from that. Like, like what you're saying, you yeah. learn from all that. Yes. Yeah, so and like that's... The, like, I feel like every relationship teaches you something for the next one. That is the you beauty know? of actually exactly. going through the experiences. A lot of people think that heartbreak, it's like, oh, this is the end of the world, but it's yeah. not. I mean, it's just, just a, it's another opportunity for you to now take be what better. you've learned to the next person yeah. who's going to come in your life. And they're going to be like, wow, like now I know what to do. Now I know how to handle things differently. So, And not not only do you learn like about relationships, but you learn about yourself as well. True. So going through all your that, own you emotions. learn about yourself. You yeah. learn about your emotions and how to unravel Well, you can cope yourself. with how, how like feel. exactly. You yeah, learn right. a lot from from just relationships, so it's like I see it as a positive. Like I don't look at any of my my relationships in the past as a negative, no matter how they ended. Right. No. Regrets. I feel like they all taught me something. Absolutely. Right. You know, and that's why I am how I am now. Well, essentially, they taught you that you, this is what you want to do. You're just gonna have to find somebody who is willing, willing, yeah. willing to yeah. do. And I guess that that kind of translates into somebody who's also in the in the industry. In the industry right? yeah. Do you feel that is a prerequisite? Like you. If you're in the industry, you have to date somebody who's in the industry. Do you think that's like something? In my opinion, I think I think your, it would yeah, be better. Opinion. Okay. I think it would be better because we understand our jobs. Den- den- like den- we, un- I understand that she has guys hitting her up for a table. Like, hey, but that's how she makes her money. For, so, for people who might not, know, might, but uh, might not know what she does, she's uh, she's a bottle girl. She's a bottle girl. Yeah. Okay. She's a bottle girl and a bartender. At Is she a bo- Oh, yeah. A centro. A centro. Okay. Do you, okay. you you don't you don't work with centro anymore? I know one time you. Okay. Nah, keep okay. it like at all. We'll keep it at there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we cut ties a while back. Okay. So, I mean, before that, so then from when you first started dating and then your relationships of, of you going through the ups and downs, like in your first relationship, were you already in this promoter life where it was difficult for you to be in a relationship? My or? first ever relationship? Yeah, well, I mean, the one that you could really count as a relationship. I mean, I had a relationship my freshman year, going into sophomore year. Yeah. And that's when I really started like promoting the little parties. Mm hmm. And that relationship, I was, like, very, like, easygoing. So, like, I would just, like, let anything happen. And, like, I'd be cool with it and this and that. And I ended up getting cheated on twice in that relationship. But it's, like, what we were talking about, though. Like, how you yeah. learn. So, like, in that relationship, like, I learned that, like, you can't just let people walk all over you. True. You know? And it was, like, for me, like, I was young. I was, like, whatever. I was, like, oh, whatever. Like, I'm just, let's keep going. Let's try to fix it. You know? And, like, I learned that. And then... My next relationship was probably just about the same thing, but it was like I actually had more control of it. And you, you, you were firsthand in that relationship. Oh, okay. You, right. you saw that yeah, whole relationship, bad, yeah. and it was like I was an asshole in that relationship. Like I was like the type of person like I wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. 
So that relationship, like that was when I really thought that you sucked because yeah, like Richie, he hated me during that relationship. Yeah, he, so Richie's probably one of the, he has probably the biggest heart that I've ever met in, in a human being, and he really cares for the people. The one those that he cares about, he will do anything for them. And this was an example of of just that. And I feel like she almost took advantage of you. Yeah, right. So that relationship, and it's funny because I felt that, but it was like it, it was like you remember it was like one of those things where it was like I wanted to believe her yeah. on everything, right. And I still somewhat kind of let her, like, guide everything. But I was, like, it got to a breaking point where I was just a dick about everything. Yeah. And I would get mad about everything. We would argue about everything. And, like, I was, I would literally, like, go to sleep and, like, we would still be arguing. I'd just fall asleep because I couldn't deal with it. And then it was I was so with toxic, her for yeah, what? So I was unhealthy. with her for, like, two years, right? Uh, yeah. I would say a little bit over I a year. Like well, work almost, trying to yeah. fix it for the last, I don't know how many and months. And after that, it was, like... There was just one little thing at the end that, like, it was, like, the tipping straw of everything. And I was right. just like, all right, this is it. I cut it off. And then that's what got me back into the promotion. And then yeah. you promoted for how much before until you met your current partner? No, no. He, no, I had, had, a, I had a girlfriend I met the other that, one as yeah. well, which, I mean. Oh, which I is another, it's another was story. weird, yeah. yeah. She was young. Mm. Um, so then I went, I was single for what? I think, like, two years, a year? Yeah. Something like that. Okay. And then she was totally cool with me promoting, but she wouldn't go. To like the clubs with me, you so did. like she would stay home and all that. Like at first, in my head, I was like, oh, "Okay, cool. Like, I could just be by myself here, chilling, working." Little did I know, she was actually cheating on me the whole time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I found out after that we broke makes up. Makes sense. That's why I I started putting two and two together, and I was like, "Wait, you never come to the clubs? Right. No wonder. No, you she's got the clubs going yeah. to her. Exactly. <laughs> so I clubbed. was like, <laughs> I was like, you clubbed. never want to come out, and like." Why? And then it was funny because at the time I was hearing things about her and her ex and this and that. And, and you know me, like, I don't like believing shit. Yeah. I don't like believing yeah. shit because, like, it, it fucks with my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was like, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then I started putting two and two together. It became, like, fucking Albert Einstein. Yeah. And I started putting two and two together. And I was like, now it makes sense. Oh. And we, we actually broke up on a cruise. I was like, yo, I'm done this and this, that and that. And the one that I was on? No. Another one. It was another one. Oh. And then after that, uh, we haven't spoken since. Good. Yeah, we haven't spoken since. Shit. No, I ran into her like a few times, like after we broke up, like within those few months, but like nothing. Like we didn't was talk. That was that her ex? Huh? Or is that a new guy that she's with? Now? Oh, no, she's with a new guy. I Actually, no, I'm cool with him. All right, cool, cool, yeah. cool. I've known him for years. Yeah. And he seems like a cool guy. Yeah. That's refreshing. If you're, you know. And then I was single again for almost a year, I think. Right. And then you met. And now I met my current girlfriend. And you met her. Well, I met her in high school. You oh, also, you knew. Yeah, her. I've known her since high school. Like, wow. she went to South Miami. I went to Braddock, and South Miami and Braddock were like very close together. Yeah, douchebags. Yeah, <laughs> we were very close together. And, like, I met her through mutual friends from South Miami, but she never paid no attention to me whatsoever. Back in the days, and then you guys, yeah. ran, what? You guys ran into each other at a club. She started or? working at Central when, you were when I was working there, and, then there was and me, I just started talking. I was like, if I can make you laugh, I got this. Oh, they, they <laughs> say, I can do this. There's a famous quote that Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe says. It's you can make a woman laugh, you can make her do anything. anything. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So, yeah, we we were pretty much, like, texting back and forth to, like, see when we were going to go on a date and this and that. And then eventually we had set up a double date. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be me, her, her best friend, and another guy. And the other guy ended up bailing. So I was waiting. I called them, and I was like, yo, uh, this guy's not answering. Like, what do you guys want to do? And they're like, oh, we're still down to, like, go out or anything. So they ended up meeting me at Blue Martini. So we went to Blue Martini. It was us three. We had a little table. And that's where the unknown family kicked in because we were sitting together, me, her, and her friend. And out of nowhere, I just see, like, mad bottles, like, sparklers coming towards me. And I'm like, I didn't order any bottles. Like, I had gotten a bottle of wine. I was like, all right, bring me a bottle of wine so we could just drink. And I just see sparklers. I see, like, seven girls with sparklers. I see a guy with two bottles of, sh of wine. And then I see somebody else with a bouquet of flowers and, like, a, a heart rose, and like, a little heart-shaped rose. Mm -hmm. And at first, I'm like, oh, it's going to another table. No, nah, they stopped at my table, and they gave it all to her. I had no idea this was happening. All my boys set it up, so, like, a little gift, like, from me to her. That's nice. super cool. And I had no that. idea. That's I have the video. That's a real hilarious. friend, yeah. man. Yeah. Everybody was recording. That's I a real friend. <laughs> Bro, I turned, I turned literally red from her, like, I was like, what the fuck? But that's pretty much, like, where we, like, hit it Kicked off. Kicked it off. Yeah, we ended up going to Booby Trap after. We had a good time. <laughs> and then from there, like, a few days later, like, the first few days of September, 
I told her, I was like, yo, like, I really want to pursue this. Right. Like, if you're Very really direct. with it, like, I really want to pursue this. And she's like, all right, then prove it to me. So Post I posted Post, a picture. Yeah. I posted a picture of us on Twitter. I remember that. And every, yeah. the, the internet <laughs> fucking crashed. Yeah. 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 It just yeah. went reckless and everybody was like, oh, he did it. Bro, even people said, would send me the picture and they're like, yeah. she's in a relationship? Yeah. 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 So I was like, all right, you want me to prove it to you? Like, I'll post it. Like, I have no problem. Like, once I know what I want, I won't stop. And I was yes. persistent with her. It got to a point where she even hated me. She, she's told me she's like in between the central days. Like there was a span where I literally hated you. I didn't want to talk to you. Like I was like over it because you were so persistent, and obnoxious about it. And I was like, well, that's because I wanted to fucking date you. <laughs> and then this is where we ended up. So like we started off, like started taking everything serious after that. She went to Cali with me for my birthday. And pretty much right after my birthday, she moved in with me. So we started living together, and now we have our own apartment together. Okay. And we've you guys have a late. dog. We have a dog. Okay, That's so awesome. cute. Yeah. Dog is so cute. Dating for eight months now. About eight months, yeah. Yeah, so eight months later. Yeah. So, so what is it like dating somebody who's who's in the nightlife industry fully? Bro, honestly, like what I was telling you, I just I feel like it's more understandable when it comes to like my job and her job. Like we both get each other with what we do. Yeah. And, like, she understands I have to hit up girls to come out. I She has to hit up guys, and guys have to hit her up for, like, bottles. bottles. Yeah, but the good thing is at least you guys work together. Well, yeah. no, well, well, no, not, not anymore. anymore. Well, not together, no, but yeah. at least the same time. For example, oh, yeah, like exactly. Me and my ex, my ex <sighs> would work sat fr Friday nights, all of Saturday, and all of Sunday at a restaurant. Yeah. I, I work, feel like that sucks because I've been through that yeah, also. Yeah. I work nine to five. Yeah. And then throughout the week, I'm exhausted because I got to go to work the next day. So you got like 30 minutes in between we clash for sex. Schedules. And that's it. We, <laughs> we yeah. clash yeah. schedules. <laughs> it was very difficult. I so. kind of, I, lo I love it. Like we have the same exact schedule. We literally work. She works Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Sundays are the only days that I hate because she works from fucking 2 p.m. till four in the morning. Right. So, yeah. so like Sundays, I really yeah. don't see her, yeah. but. Other than that, we literally have every day together, like Monday through fucking Saturday, we're off until 9 p.m. every single day, all of us. So we actually get to enjoy ourselves. And I think that's way better than having to deal with opposite schedules. Because like right. that, like imagine like you work till, till five and then you want to go to the gym, but then she works at eight. Then what do you like? Exactly. You don't you guys don't have that time to like really bond and like, it's tough. you know, mm -hmm. but when and you really want something, you still force it. But yeah, exactly. Somebody, you know that. But especially, like, imagine working 9 to 5. Like, you're tired after yeah, working 9 to 5. Like, I work four hours a day, and, like, all I do is party. So it's, like, for me, like, even if I'm just sitting at the club, that's me working. Right. So I don't really get as tired, although I tell all the time I'm tired because <laughs> I have back problems. But <laughs> it, it is what it is. I, I like it way better than dating out of the industry. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, but at this point, I mean, has there ever been a point where your job or her job has come in between you guys or has it caused a problem? I well, mean, other than like the texting or like having to reach out to people. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, like, like there's there's the, you're, you're going to have those issues, obviously, like, but it's all about the communication right. and the trust, and the trust Absolutely. you know, like if there's a communication, I don't feel like there should be any problems with it. Obviously you have to know your lines and you don't have, not to cross them. Well, yeah, we always say it's communication and comprehension. You exactly. need to understand. Pretty like much we're old happens. enough to understand what's right from wrong. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's all about that. I think like communication, that's another thing I learned from my past relationships. I would be stubborn. You know this. I, w I wouldn't talk like you. Would, she would get mad at me and I would just block out. Yeah. I wouldn't want to talk about anything. I'd be like, look, you're wrong. I'm right. And this and this. And now I'm the first one like with my girlfriend. Now you can ask her like we fight and I'm the first one to apologize, even if it's not my fault, because we're arguing for something stupid. And it's like, okay. if, if we could just figure out why we're arguing, because most of the times you argue and you don't even know what you're fighting about. True. Like small stuff. But you feel like apologizing even if you're not in the wrong. Yeah. At some point you might overdo it. Yeah. Because uh, at some so, point she's going to so I have to put you. my, exactly. So exactly. You don't want that to happen I've either. told her, I was like, look, like sometimes we have some fights and I'm like, you got to realize that this one's not my fault. Yes. If you don't mind. And I have to put my foot down there. How old is she? She's 21. So, yeah, so she is younger. younger. So. Yeah, she's I mean, younger. nothing against her, but, you know, obviously there's she's a level actually, of maturity. But she's, she's very mature for her age. I know, I've, I've met yeah. her. Yeah, she, no, she's a great woman, but obviously. And she hangs out with older people. So, yeah. She graduated early and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, like, more. I feel like she's way more mature than what she is for her age. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, would you consider yourself more of a jealous guy? Or I know you're very confident, and, and you, but you're not a jealous guy. In my guy. younger days, I was I was very jealous. And now, now it's like, right now. like, again, we go back to the same thing, trust, like, I'm with you, and like it's for a reason. Like I'm looking long term. I'm not here to date you for eight months and then yeah, you're, you're trying it. to build with somebody. So it's like if if I'm gonna put my time into this, I expect the same in return, and I'll trust you until you give me a reason not to. So I and I've seen how she acts when she's working and all that, and it's like she she respects me. Okay. 
Okay. And I love her for that. And like I, I don't feel like I have anything to worry about. You know, like my 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 goal is keep her happy. You know, mm-hmm. happy wife, happy life. Like That's that. what they say. Um, earlier you said that you know you you two or you know where the lines are, where the line is. Yeah. So where is the line? So obviously, like, like would you could would if you know she's a bottle girl and stuff like that? Would, if would you date strip? Like I'm not saying her, obviously not. But like, oh, you're if, saying like in general, yeah. Relationships. W- would you date a stripper? Would if would you date somebody with an OnlyFans? If if she were to be like, hey, Richie. How do you feel about this? So me and my girl now have actually spoken about these things. Oh, okay. You know, like we've talked about it. Not not that she has one or anything, but like we've spoken about it. And she's like, oh, how would you feel about this? Uh-huh. You know, and at first, like me fucking around, I was like, ah, I don't give a shit. But yeah. I mean, it depends the content you're posting. Yeah, a lot of people say the content matters. So like if you're posting up nudes, I'm not cool with that. So what else would you post? Like bikini pictures? Or so I mean, that's like, what a lot of like, people... Yeah. A lot of girls are finessing all these ah, motherfuckers I, on yeah, OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they'll post a picture in it's a It's not fucking, even them or it's yeah. not even them. You're posting a picture with just like a bra like sitting on like... Like, uh, that uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and a lot of times you go on like the, the people's Instagram stories, the posts, like you post, post the same stuff on yeah, Instagram exactly. or Twitter. Might as well get paid for it. Exactly. So, I, yeah, so I, it's I like if, it's, if the content's not disrespectful, then... Okay, but if you're posting like, like nudes, nudes and all that, like I'm not with that. That's, no that's where I draw the line. It's okay. like now you're for everybody. Now right. you're just showing everybody what you got, and it's okay. like it's not even special to me. Yeah. Right, because I feel like OnlyFans has grown so much exponentially, especially yeah. in Miami, where it's like almost you know you go on somebody's Instagram or or, or Twitter more in the in the in the bio, it's like you know, yeah. link to my exactly, OnlyFans, yeah. and it's like fuck that that's taken over from uh the Cash App link. Now instead oh, of getting yeah. the cash app yeah, link, yeah. you got like the OnlyFans only link. Okay, yeah. well at least we get something out of it, you know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. you you are you would be open to dating somebody you know, with an OnlyFans? I mean, I'm content. saying this like, now, but it's like I still have that that thought in the back of my head that I say, like, even if it's just provocative shit, I'm like, what for? So okay, like so, for what? Yeah. So like, know, what do you? Uh, yeah, it's money. But it's like for I'd rather pick up a second job if you need the extra <laughs> money yeah. than have you posting your ass. Although like. Bikini pictures or whatever, like that's Instagram, of shit. course. But like, if you're gonna post more provocative shit, right. I'll, I'll pick up a second job busting tables yeah, that's if you need it. I like that. I know, you know, and I've asked people, and people yeah. have told me, yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind. I don't care. It's easy to say it when you don't when, when you're not with somebody. Exactly. Like when you have those emotions, when you see yeah. this person, you're in love with this person, you've been together, you know, through stuff, and it's like, hey, I'm gonna have an OnlyFans. You that, might think differently. That's I, like I, dating a stripper. Yes. So like, I we, have friends that have dated strippers. Have you dated a stripper? Me, no. Fuck no. no, no it's not. It's thing. not your thing. Nah. Okay. But I've had friends that date strippers and they're completely cool with it. Okay. One of my w- one of my boys, his girlfriend's a porn star and he has no problem with it. Wow. Okay. I mean, at you the end know? of the day, you know, you have That's to understand difference. that it's a profession. Exactly. And they're, and they're taking it professionally. Yeah. So as long as you treat it like that, I mean, and people are more comfortable with themselves. Exactly. More comfortable about like that. for me, I wouldn't be comfortable. Exactly. With that. But those right. who are and they see it, like, listen, she's she's they take getting advantage her money of it and, and they, she yeah. likes it. She's making good money from exactly. it. Exactly. You got to respect that, you know. But yeah. it's up to you if you want to pursue that. Of course, yeah. Okay, so from all that we we took in and stuff like that, single Richie, relationship Richie, uh, do you think you yourself, you're more of a relationship person or a single person? Not what you prefer, because obviously in your relationship, yeah. no, you're not going to be like, I prefer being single. I you're mean, not going to say that. It's funny because a lot of people will think like, the opposite, but I'd rather be in a relationship okay. than be single. So Why? I... Oh, your I girl's, actually... Your girl's going to be really happy to hear that. Yeah, no, and it's true, and I'll, t- I'll tell you the exact reason, and she knows this. I was going down a dark path okay. before we started dating. Kind of yes. Like I was drinking every day to the point where like I couldn't even talk. Oh I was literally like she it's funny because before we were dating, I almost died in the club because of how drunk I got. And she had ordered Postmates and Pooh was in the front. And he's like, yo, like I need to get Richie some food. And she's like, oh, like I just ordered this. It just got here. Do you want to give it to him? And he, she, she gave it to me. So that's another thing I'm grateful for. Like she hated me at that point and she gave me her food because <laughs> I was in the back dying. Mm-hmm. They literally carried me out the club with my feet Shit. dragging like this. Literally dragging out the club. Yeah. And it was like I was going down a very destructive path. Right. I woke up in my car one day, random as fuck, a Monday morning. I woke up in my car in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, why am I here? And how did I get here? And after that day, like that was the day that I told myself, I was like, yo, I'm not going to drink to the point where I'm drinking anymore because I'm going to fucking kill myself or kill somebody. See? And I was like, after that, I was like, I started slowing it down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then I got into the relationship. And like, now it's like, I don't drink like I used to. Like, my main priority is making sure she's fine. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, drunk, you. have fun, do what you I'll want. I'll take care of you. But I'll, I'll have my few drinks. I'll get a good buzz. And I'll make sure we're good. Yeah, she gives That's you the way that I see it. Like a purpose of like wanting to yeah. take care of yourself as well. Exactly. I like that. Awesome. Like I even had like for for two months, I was having like fucking like breathing attacks. 
I couldn't sleep. I went like three, almost so three months. It's also probably because you're fat. But. Yeah, that could be it too. <laughs> please, please but I was literally yeah, like, I would stop it. breathing while I was sleeping. And she would wake up and be like, yo, you good? That's yeah, because you're fat. Yeah. Shit. No, it's because of my lifestyle. <laughs> well, which includes the fat. <laughs> So so speaking of your lifestyle, what's like the worst? I'm sure you know at the club you see some grimy stuff, people yeah. in relationships cheating, girls cheating, oh, yeah. guys cheating. I mean, like, does that scare you when you, you know? I mean, for like as in me? Yeah, like for, for like does that be like, man, like if they do it, you know, like that could I be mean, happen to me anytime or like again, like, like that's where, where the trust kicks in. Right. Like you gotta trust and as long as there's no reason for me not to trust, I'm gonna give her my full trust, you know? Okay. And I mean, I've had people, like, tell me the same thing. Like, yo, your girl literally does not talk to anybody. Like, she will ignore anybody. Like, people will try to grab her and she'll put them in her place and shit like that. So, like, that's one thing that she's shown me that, like, I appreciate a lot. Because, like, any other girl would just be, like... Like, I know other girls that work in the industry and, like, they tell me all the time that I go, like, a guy will pay me a thousand bucks just to sit on his lap and I'm going to do it. So, it's, like, I've never heard any of that. Yeah. So, it's, like, for me, like, that, that goes a long way. Of course, and I appreciate it. And yeah. Like it, it makes me want to be better every day. You feel right, me? right, and it also tightens the bond that you guys exactly two, you, you two share. Yeah. Yeah. You, you remember Brian Curbelo? Of course. Yeah, he, so he he's Kirby. Yeah, so my he's, boy, he's your yeah, big brother. My big brother. So your grand big. He was the one that told me the same thing. He's like, if they never give you a reason to doubt, you need to yeah. give them the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. So that's very important because a lot of people you kind of want to control, manipulate with for no reason. For no you, reason. Because you just have these suspicions. Yes. And you know, that's you that's why, like with me, like I let it ride. Like I'm like I'm trusting you until I find a reason not to. But once you break my trust, like there's like a 99 percent chance you're not gaining it back. Absolutely. Because after that, like if you fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. I'm you glad you brought that. Up. Okay, so. Um, um, you know, obviously this is going to air, you know, at a later date, but so in the term, we've had an episode called, you know, uh, cheating and second chances or uh, getting yeah. back with your ex. So they're a little bit both. So obviously when we say getting back with your ex, it's almost like when time is, has happened in between and you learn yeah, like four or five like years. Um, so in this case for cheating and second chances, you just said that if, you know, you, something happens, you lose like there's 90, 90% chance that you yeah. get back with them. Of, and then you mentioned something earlier, you know, when the situation happens, like you said, only fans, yeah. you know, it depends when it happens and your emotions are invested in there. You may, you say, yeah, yeah, for sure yeah. now. But then when it happens, you it's know, yeah, it exactly. So then do you think that if someone does defy your trust with cheating or maybe, you know, again, there's levels to cheating, but whatever. Do you think that you'd be able to give somebody a second chance or would you be open now? Think if, think about your relationship now. Uh huh. You know, I obviously don't want to give her the opportunity for it. That's not the reason for it. But yeah. do you think that it's easy to to be able to give somebody a second chance? I mean, I like like what we spoke about earlier. Every relationship I've been in before, I've been cheated on. And you and always the, fought. The first two I gave second chances to because I was young. You know, like I wanted to see like like how the relationship would build out. And I gave him a shot and history it, repeats itself. So it's like for me at this age now, it's like. Like, I'm literally investing everything I have into us. So it's like, I expect the same. So if you just decide to just f do something stupid like that, like, that's it for me. Like, right. even if it's going to hurt me and, and I'm, it's going to take me time to get over it. Like, I can't do that anymore because, like, it's just happening. And I'm like, I'm not saying it, it's with every girl that it'll happen. But it's just what I've been through that I'm just like, I can't put myself through this again. Absolutely. You get have, me? Have you ever cheated? In a relationship? No. I respect Never. that, man. No, not I've lot, always said I'm not like, a lot of you guys out here. If you're gonna you cheat, it's because you don't want to be with her. So right. just break up with her. Right. Why are you gonna go through all that shit? Yeah, I know you're gonna argue. Oh, why you want to break up with me? Why this? But at the end of the day, it's better than her finding out you're cheating on her, and then you're gonna break up anyways. So like, hey, I don't want to be with you. I'm literally say it straight up. Hey, I don't feel this anymore. Like I feel yeah. like cheating. So I want to break up, and that's it. Why are you gonna go through all that extra shit for no reason? I like that. Chances are she's probably going to stab you if she finds out, so might as well just tell her straight up. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think being honest and yeah. breaking her heart but is better than you dying. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you having you know, been you know, cheated on, has it ever, yeah. like, you know, I think it's pretty admirable that you still have that trust in, in yeah. the person you're with today because a lot of people say, I've been cheated on yeah. once, and then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have these trust issues for the rest of my Especially life. Especially dudes. It's like yeah. you, you get your heart broken once when you're yeah. in high school and you never want to give yeah. somebody else Exactly, a, but I feel like up. it does, you're not, you're not. For me, I, I work the other way. And, like, that's why, like, I'm very open and I'm very, like, giving for that. And it's like, again, I give you the trust. Like, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt until you give me a reason not to. The second I see something sketchy, then the trust starts going down, and then it's like I start questioning shit. And I don't like doing that either because, like, then my mind goes crazy. Exactly. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I hate that shit, and I, I don't want to put myself through that either. 
So it's like that's why I trust until like I I'm given a reason not to. Right. And but then if you were to leave and then find somebody else, you would still start off fresh. From, yeah. Right. Yeah. Fresh, that, yeah. And that that's so important. And yeah. a lot, not a lot of people, including yeah, myself, a lot of people will bring um, the past yeah, with yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. hard to not do that. Right. Yeah, so I, yeah. Yeah. I I always say um you should never have someone new suffer the consequences exactly the, past, the right. last person did to you there's, uh, there's a song uh, His Mistakes by Usher Usher okay, yes. we'll, we'll, play that in the, we'll play that in the background <laughs> um, no but that's very important because that's, yeah. that's the problem so the good thing about going through relationships especially all your experiences you learn you learn yeah. patterns and then that you, you build that exactly. extra skin of, of how to catch red flags exactly, and catch yeah. that but the problem is that some people they mistake that too if my ex did it that means you're doing it exactly. too not the same yeah. So you have to, you know, still be open minded and still be fair because if they don't give you a reason to doubt, it may not be yeah. the same, the, the same thing. And so. I think it's also because, like, I'm the opposite. Like, for for girls to trust me, it's been very hard, and you've seen this firsthand as well. And it's like for me, it's the opposite. Like, I'll give you all the trust, but like for for them, I always have to build up the trust, and I guess that's what like makes me want to like just open up and be like, all right, like why why make it harder. Right, like I trust you. Like, yeah, put it all out exactly. There. And and like, again, like I said, as as we get older, you you learn new things. You learn, you go through experiences, and like everything helps you out for your next relationship. I feel like right now in this relationship, I understand so much more than I fucking did in my first relationship, and You're it's like older. so much more yeah. things that like now I can actually control and handle myself. Like how to avoid an argument, right. how to solve an argument. Other than back then when I was just fucking going at it for hours for no fucking reason. Yeah, I, a big part also, of course, is that emotional intelligence where you grow yeah. as you get older, you get more mature, and you learn things that you didn't know. Nobody, a lot of these things, nobody teaches them in, in school, in high yeah. school. Like, we learn all it's about real all life, these things. Real life, real life shit. And, you know, being emotionally s smart and, and, and knowing how to, you know, have a conversation or de-escalate the conversation, yeah. not always fight and how to find a solution. We, we have to teach this, that ourselves. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's kind of like try and error almost. Like yeah. you have to go through it in order to, you know, grow, grow through it. So, exactly. Yeah, I, I kind of see where, where, where you're heading. Um, and so eight months, I mean, what's next for you guys? Obviously, you guys live together. Yeah. You, you have a dog together, right? We have a, a dog. dog. Well, he's huge. Yeah. It's yeah. a boy, right? It's a boy. He's yeah. five months old. Ghost. Yeah. He's, he's a fucking pain in the ass is what he is. I feel like he's... It's hard to train him. Yeah, you got to be on top of that. But yeah. so so what do you guys... What's next for you guys? In terms so of we were... Right now we're it's eight months. We're actually, huh? It's eight months. I know, yeah. but you guys live together. But, I mean, I mean, but we've lived together since sep since the end of September. How long? Okay, so you, you think it was kind of quick. I'm sorry. You yeah, guys, we moved really fast. You, you guys, yeah. okay, you guys started dating, and then how far into the relationship you, you moved in? Like a month. Like we started. Boy. Like like I posted that picture. Shit. I posted that picture. I think it was September fifth or seventh. Like the first week of September, I posted that picture. After I came back from Cali, which was October seventh, she moved in. But what was the rush? Why? Huh? Yeah, why? Because she was living, I think she was living at a friend's house. Oh, okay. And I was, oh no, she was still at her, she was at her mom's. So she's lived at her, her friend's houses a lot. And then she went back to her mom's house and then she has brothers as well. And the nightlife and all that. So she's like, oh, like she would stay over four or five times out of the week. Yeah. So I was like, why don't you just move in? And it's funny because the day I met her dad, it was hilarious because he didn't know she was living with me. Oh, wow. And like, I met him, super cool dude. And we're just there. It was on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that I met him and we're talking and then he asked her, he's like, oh, uh, where are you staying? And me proud as fuck. I'm like, oh, with me. And he just stared at me and I'm like, no, no, we have an apartment together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked, I looked at better. her when we left. I looked at her. I was like, you didn't tell your dad you lived with me. She's like, why would I say that? I was like, oh, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Why would I bring this up right now? Wow. I should have told you before. But yeah, but her mom is what her mom, her mom knew that obviously but her parents are cool as fuck too. Right. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, given your platform and given the industry that you work in and stuff like that, you obviously made a statement to your relationship by putting a picture of her on social media. So, I guess, you know, with your history and even now, you know, what would you say? How has social media pretty much affected your relationship in, in general? Uh, so, pretty much, like, it all depends on how you are. Like, before, like, when I'm single, like, Twitter is literally all about engagement. So you literally try to react with everybody so right. that your engagement goes up. Everybody understands what you're talking about. And like, you're just talking. Like, now with a relationship, I'm not as involved with Twitter. Like, I'll look at funny shit. We'll send each other shit. But it's like, I don't I don't look for the, the attention from people anymore as much. Like, I'll promote my stuff, but, like, I won't interact into anything else. And, like, with the whole Instagram as well, like, dating her, it's like she posts a, a, a picture, right, in a bikini or, like, a modeling picture. It's like... Thousands of likes, fucking thousands of comments, and, like, a lot of people, like, how you were asking earlier, the jealous type, like, 
I don't get jealous about people commenting. Do you like, go through the comments? Do you look at them? I actually don't. Okay. I like, probably wouldn't want to do it. I, I wouldn't want to because I know people are stupid and they'll say dumb shit. Yeah. But like every now and then, like if I'm on the picture, like sometimes I go back just to see a picture that I like a lot. And like I'll see like comments and shit. And like I don't really care what people put as long as they're, they're not disrespecting or saying anything like. Of course. Like, like bad yeah. towards her. Then like I don't give a shit. Say whatever you want. Like at the end of the day, like that's my girlfriend. Like she's not going to reply to you. Does, does she have pictures of, of you, both of you guys? Up? Hey, we got one picture. One picture. She has okay. our, our Christmas tree Christmas picture picture. Because yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I follow her too, but I don't really. She, yeah. she doesn't post often, does she? Nah. Yeah, she so. wants to like I've, I've I've tried telling her like she she likes the whole modeling thing like she's not looking for it as a career thing but she really likes it so I told her I was like get some photographers do some shoots you know like post them I have her photographer her her last shoot picture on my phone as yeah. a fucking background because I love seeing it I see it, I'm like ass let's go <laughs> that's me, <laughs> that's, me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um but I guess with social media I mean both of you guys are dependent in a way. Yeah, on social media, like I mean, I mean that's how our you more, you, come yeah, you yeah. more so than maybe her, but even so, yeah. she's still so like there, there is no relationship. Like, you guys couldn't just be like, hey, let's delete social media. Yeah, exactly. For okay. us, we couldn't because like that's where we get, we get new clients, new right. people to come out, and like if I get clients that want to go to her club, like the first thing I do is like, hey, hit up my girlfriend. Okay. Like here's her Instagram, here's her number, text her, whatever. Like I have that type of thing where like I trust her enough that I don't give a shit. Like hit her up, talk to her, be like, yo, I want a table. Like that doesn't bother me. So, like, it's something, like, again, like, we need it for work. Yeah. Cause, Without yeah. it, we can't. Yeah. Like, it'll be so much harder to of get course. people to come out. Well, what I was saying the last time is social media is a tool. And how, it, it is. how you use it. And you guys, you know, obviously use it to your advantage. Correct. In your, you know, career field. So, yeah. So, I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> a question that I had was obviously Miami and the nightlife and everything. When it comes to you guys going out and stuff like that, who pays? We've talked about this. All right, so this this is a good question. I like this one. Please. So pretty much ever since we moved in together, um, I pay the rent. So like I'll pay the rent. Like she doesn't have to worry about anything that has to do with the rent. Like Mm. and she'll buy groceries. You know? Oh, but she okay. Yeah, she'll buy groceries. But we used to spend well, she used to spend like three hundred bucks every two weeks on just groceries. And like we would go out to eat and I would go to pay and she wouldn't let me. And we would go out another day, and she wouldn't let me. So it sounds like the finances, in you yeah. know, if you were to kind of, you know, get net. The, yeah. You know, yeah. We even out. We yeah, even out somehow. Out. And, like, Postmates, like, she orders Postmates all the time for us, and, like, never lets me pay. Like, she literally, anything that has to do with food, she's like, no, I'm paying for food. I'm paying for food because cool. I pay the rent. But Okay, but you're accepting of it because you pay the rent, or you just get caught blindsided, and you're like, oh, okay. Most of the time, she orders Postmates, and it's her card's already linked, so I can't even do anything about it. But we go out to eat and like we literally fight at the table because she puts her card and I'm like, yo, no, let me yeah. pay today. And then she's like, no, you can get the next one. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, I appre- that's another thing that like I really appreciate about her. Like, she looks out for me. Like, I don't go a day hungry. Like, I literally, at all times, whenever I'm hungry, she either cooks or she buys food. I mean, and at the it's end, great. you pay rent. So, like, yeah. it's like, eh, you know, was that something that was like, that you said, hey, I'm going to do it? Or I mean, it? when she first moved in, I was, was she you? moved into my apartment ah. with my boys. So, I was paying rent no matter what. Okay. Yeah, but but now that we moved out to our own spot, it's the same thing. I told her, I was like, I'll cover the rent and then you cover the extras. So, you'll cover, she'll cover the light. She'll cover the internet and she'll cover the food. So you guys, the dynamics is just works well it, for you guys. Pretty much like that. Yeah. So I mean, we both make really good money as well. So like to us, it's like it's really nothing. Like who pays what really? Right. But like we just split it up like that because I guess that's what we were doing from when we were living in Doral. That's cool. Okay. So we right. just kept the same so dynamic so going. Exactly. So yeah. like if you guys were to move in, let's say I don't know house and whatever long long the. Uh, down the line, you guys just keep that kind of balance going. So now, like, if we're if we're planning on buying a house, that's going to be different because obviously yeah. it's everyone, it's, it's her credits, yeah, it's um things are tied together. Exactly, that's tied together. There, it's like we got to figure out exactly what we're going to budget towards the house, how much, and all that. We got to figure so, that out. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a little tip that one of my coworkers told me because I asked him, you know, given the platform that that we're using, and I'm like, how do you guys choose finances? And he goes, well, we each have our own accounts for our own spending. And then we, we have a joint account that we have automatic transfers in. Okay. So, and then on top of that checking account, we also have a savings. So every month we have our transfer that goes towards the mortgage, the expenses, the utilities, the water, whatever. And they split it all? Yeah. So they have their own transfers that go in. The bills get paid. Anything extra gets transferred to the savings. So nice. then at the end of the year, if they want to do like travel or they, they want to buy yeah, gifts or cool. for whatever, then they'll have that. But they each money that, 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 that nice. goes in. So then they know whatever we have together, which is the house and all the utilities and for the kids or whatever, gets out of that account. Anything over, put into the savings. And then by the nice. end of the year, if we have money to spurge, we will. And if we don't, then, you know, obviously we have to up the ante like on, on both ends. 
So I mean, for that question, that I like that down the line. That's if nice. that was something, I mean, with with my girl, it's different because like she'll just splurge for no reason. I mean, given the amount of money that she makes, well, if she has her own account. She sure. could, as we, long as the bills get paid. paid. Her first. birthday, her birthday just passed, um, and we were gonna go to Puerto Rico, but the whole virus shit, so we postponed it. And she literally booked the flight to Puerto Rico, and then I was like, "Oh, it's my niece's birthday in August." She's like, "All right, I got you." Literally thirty minutes later, I had a flight to fucking New York ready. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's super cool. That's literally, awesome. we went out to Flanagan's two days ago with my boy Ernie and his girl. They're going yeah. to Chicago in November, and she's like, "Babe, I'm looking at Chicago flights." Like she just loves to travel as well. That's so dope. So it's that. and she has air miles. So it's like half of the time she doesn't even pay for <laughs> for it. But yeah. she's literally like every time we want to go on vacation, she's like, "I'm booking flights right now." Awesome. So that's her but then like thing. I've told her like so like the New York trip she paid it. But I told her I'm going to pay it, obviously, because I'm not going to let her pay for fucking two trips either. You know, it's like I got my sister's house where we're living. We're going to stay at my sister, save some money there. So I was like, I'll pay the flights and all that. But that's one thing that we really want to do. We just want to travel. She wants to go to Arizona and see rocks. I told her to wait till baseball season so I can go to Diamondbacks game at least. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you go see your rocks, I'll go see my game. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. Like, <laughs> if I travel within the States, like, I like to, I want to see, like, like sports. Yeah. Whether it's basketball, football. Yeah, like, exactly. I, I have to go, go to a game. venue. Yeah, I got to do something. Yeah. I feel like you're missing out on the yeah. actual experience of living in the city, <laughs> like, visiting the city. And she's, she's very accepting of that. I told her, I was like, look, you pick one attraction you want to go to, yeah. we do it. Mm -hmm. And then I pick one attraction that I want to do. Fair. And to me, like, it's like, my attraction is always going to be a baseball game. Because nice. like my one of my dream goals in, in in my life is to be able to go to all thirty baseball stadiums. Me too. Well, we should yeah. start going. Go together. I'm super down. I'm gonna let you know. You you know this. How many times have I told you about wanting to travel? I just didn't have the money for well, it. Yeah, back but he, then. he doesn't turn out. He doesn't fly domestic though. Yeah. I go, I'll go. I'll, I go to like Cali. But rare, or, but rare. Or, yeah. But if you if there's no, a trip like, to be you're made, I'll like make it. Fucking crazy ass know, places. But because I go by myself. But if you guys are, yeah. you guys go to I don't know New York like as a group. I'll go. tell her to bring oh, a yeah. friend for you. Please do. Please do. <laughs> she have another one? <laughs> we can make it happen. Yeah. We can make um, it happen. Luch, not for you. You got a kid. <laughs> yeah. He had a loop. But I know, like, I really like the the point you were bringing up and his, his you know, the experiences with, with that person. That there, like, as far as when it comes to who pays, there's really no rule for it. It depends on yeah. the dynamics. Like, what works for you guys might not work for me. And what works yeah. for me might not work for, for Christian. Normally, like, if I'm single, I usually pay. You okay. know, like if I'm single and I'm taking you on a date, which I really do, I don't like doing dates like that. Uh -huh. I'll pay. Okay. Like I'm not gonna let you pay if I'm the one that's taking you out on a date. Because it's because you asked for, yeah. You, because you asked for like, hey, let's go out. Yeah, you, you initiated. The I date. initiated the so date. That's what you're gonna pay. Okay, yeah. so, so I pay. Then, has there ever been an experience of a girl asking you or telling you, hey, I want to go do this, or I think this would be fun for us to do? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like like they don't like <laughs> single me? No. Yeah. 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 Obviously. I don't. I mean, not that I can remember. Okay. So you always initiate the the yeah, but the like I said, I, I I like single me. Like I hate yeah. dates. I don't really do dates like that. I hate it. Okay. Like most of my shit is obviously at the club, and True. most of the girls that I meet when I'm single are at the club. Okay. So it's like yeah, dating is really not yeah. something. I see and for me too. to get serious, it's like you really have to catch my attention. Like I really want it because if not, like I really after two days, I really don't care. Okay. I'm just like whatever. All right, interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, given, you know, what we just said about shooting your shot, it essentially is what we're going to going to be going into. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess, you know, you're obviously taking, but I guess for men who are single, it, it, you being in the industry, what, what do you think would be a great way for a woman to shoot a shot to a guy? And then I'm going to refer Bro, also honestly, to men to... to the, the way that it is right now, I think if any girl just shoots a shot, like, they have a way better chance of the guy saying I, yes. I, yeah, dude. Like, if you just send a DM, like, chances are the guy's going to be like, yeah, I'm down. I have something to say in regards to that. So there's this thing where it's like girls take offense when they get, you know, nasty Check comments that. or no, not nasty comments in like in for their pictures because they're so used to getting good ones. So they feel yeah. bad. That's why when guys get a good comment as opposed to like any negative, they like think we're so not, used yeah. to getting negative. That's why when we get one good comment, we're like. Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> love me more. But for women, when they get a bad one, they're like, "Oh my god, this guy's a piece of shit" or yeah. whatever. I didn't ask, so they, that's another dynamic of like, why as a guy, yeah. just be nice to us, honestly, and, and be shit. <laughs> we'll pay attention. To be you. nice, and guys will pay attention. <laughs> like that's it. So then, in your way, you obviously shot your shot to your girlfriend by um, being um, I like to call it uh, gorilla flirting, where it's just very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Very aggressive. So um, that it was, was for every you. every Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I was there at the podium next to her. Learning and talking it up. <laughs> yeah, I guess for you being in the industry, I mean, it's not really, no. you know, it, it, for your history, because you're always involved with so many different, you know, you know, male, female in the party industry. I mean, for you, it's just like talking to people. It's just and talking. That can, that's where you create that's that like environment. If like, like pretty much the same question, like to shoot a shot, like for a guy, just be honest, just be real. Just be be yourself, like and like that. if you're funny, be funny. But if you're not, then don't stay even stay away from the jokes. 
because you're gonna get <laughs> shot. <laughs> awkward, awkward. Gonna backfire. Don't do it because it's gonna backfire. But like, all you gotta do, like, you just gotta have confidence. Yeah. And that's one thing I learned in college: being confident. And you can, you, you know that. Remember the first time that they made me go take fucking roses to girls oh, in yeah. the middle of the, the, the cafeteria. You never had to do that. I didn't have to do. So that. The, oh. I had, I had a, an older brother tell me, "Oh, go buy roses." And you got to give one rose to a different girl. Yeah. And I'm like, what do I do with it? He's like, nothing. Just give him the rose and say, this is for you and walk away. That's it. I'm like, what the fuck is this for? Dude. And that literally pushed me out of my comfort zone. You think so that's awesome. bad? Bro, you know what I had to do? So one of the other brothers, he goes to me, he goes, all right, you have to go up to three different girls and just ask to take a picture with them. I'm like. See, that's a little weirder. It is weird. That's so a little weirder. So made it happen. I got the three pictures. <laughs> and I had to post it, bro. Like, that's how it was back then. Like, they were like, <laughs> really happen. But I didn't care. Like, I was like, you know, whatever. I had to do yeah. it. And, it. and it worked, you know. And I think the girls understood also because they're like, oh, you're probably a pledge. Like, yeah. you know, they want you to do this for whatever. Um, yeah, the older girls I, I, on campus would know off rip what you were up to. Like, oh, this guy's a pledge. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they already knew. They're like, all right, give me the rose. Go. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> That's fun. But that, that literally puts you out of your comfort zone. And I think True. I think college helped me in that aspect of being able to talk to girls without being shy. Because in high school, I was really shy. In middle school, I think if I talked to one girl, it was a lot. <laughs> like I, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't talk to anybody other than like my boys, my friends, like my, my teammates when I played baseball as a kid. And like in college is where I really got that exposure of like opening up to like being able to talk to a girl without getting nervous. Yeah. And that's pretty much, the, the, I think, the, the best way to, to shoot your shot. It's not just that. I want to piggyback off that because you being confident, but you also have to be comfortable with yourself. Correct. Because if you're not comfortable, yeah. your approach is already going to be off. So if you're confident and you're comfortable with what you were willing to offer, you're not shooting a shot anymore. Like you're providing value to them. Exactly. In a sense, like I, I see it as a business deal. I used to always, point. I used to always tell myself, I was like, I could talk to anybody through like Twitter, Instagram, like post anything. And like they won't really grasp who I really am or how I really am. Yes. So I would always tell myself if I could just talk to you in person, like I know that I could get you to understand how I am and that I'm a good person and sure. like yeah, you're making my charisma values. and all that. Like exactly. So that's that's what I would say to guys. Like don't be scared. Like what's the worst that can happen? They say no, right. and then you go find another girl, and that's it. But if they say yes and you really like her, then look at me. It took me what three fucking months, maybe longer. Yeah, no. Some people would call that harassing, but yeah, it worked for you, right? <laughs> call the cops on you. Anyway, you have cops, any, cops. Anything else? <laughs> okay, it's all, good. all right, so um, so there's gonna be a new thing, a new kind of ending segment. So it is time, time to break up. All right, so Richie, <laughs> any final thoughts that you'd like to share with anything about you? Anything, any shout outs you'd like to give? Anything about your business, your company? Anything you, any advice you'd like to give people who are probably in the industry who want to date? Anything? Yeah. The floor is yours. All right, so shout out my team. Obviously, got a shout out unknown. Um, clubs are gonna be back open soon, so. Stay tuned. We'll be posting. You guys want to party? You hit us up. We got you. Um, for like relationship, brother. Um, again, just trust, communication. You just got to be open and willing to to put your pride down a lot. Yep. And I think that's one thing that's really helped me before I was very prideful. And now I'm the complete opposite where like I'll literally put my pride down to try to resolve something, even if I might not be the one that's wrong. But to this day, it's worked out for me and my girlfriend. And, like, sh I, I, she understands it. And, like, I think it's made her open up more because she's very prideful as well sometimes. And she sees that, like, I'll just put my pride down and, like, try to figure it out. And the more, like, like the more she saw it, she would be like, all right, like, I fucked up now. Like, she would come up to me and be like, hey, babe, I'm sorry. Like, this and this. And, like, it's really worked for us. So, like, communication, trust, and just don't be prideful. Like, that's fucking, yeah. like, childish nowadays. And... That's pretty much it. Babe, I know you're watching. I love you, girl. I, I think she's probably going to be the I first one to watch this. No, 100% she's going to be the first, first one to watch. Let me see what the fuck, fuck he, he said. <laughs> yeah. What bitch yeah. he talked about. All right, well. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being on. And no, yeah. thank you guys. Yeah. Thank Richie, you guys thank for having you. me. I love you. It's always an honor to, to, to be in your presence. You're a great person. A Appreciate great man. you guys, man. I, of course. You know, I love you with all my heart as, 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 as probably one of my best friends. Thank you for taking the time for coming today and no, for the viewers for and the listeners. Yep. So we'll have be, we'll be having more guests on the line, but uh, if you've been watching us, thank you for the support. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you for, for taking the minute, take, for whatever amount of time this episode was. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't know yet. <laughs> you know, so we had Richie here. So again, um, I'm going to put the rest of his information for you guys to follow yes. him down below. Um, show him love, show him support, buy his ties. They're good quality. Um, and, any, and stay tuned for what's coming next with me and Viera. And yeah, we have a we big have a, We have some projects working on, so that's going to be exciting. But 
for those who are watching once again thank you very much for tuning in and have a great day ciao guys hey guys thanks so much for watching today's content we hope you guys enjoyed the show and if you did please make sure to subscribe like and comment down below and follow us on every other social media platform we're on facebook instagram and twitter go ahead and follow us leave us a comment and any feedback helps whatever you leave us we'll be able to touch up on another show or we'll be able to get back to you with any other comments thank you thank you guys